Well, welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio uh, 42. And uh, today I'm going to backtrack a little bit here uh, from a picture that I worked on last time. Um, usually, a lot of times I'll work on a picture and uh, uh, it requires the paint to be, uh, the watercolor uh, paint to be uh, uh, drier before you can use a marker. So what I thought I'd do is I, I, I brought back the picture I did last week and I'm going to just touch it up a little bit to perk it up a little bit using a, a, a permanent marker, a black marker. And then I'm going to put this up on the uh, easel. And uh, we've been doing that to kind of fill up the little space in back of me. Uh, so uh, 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 it's the, this is the one I worked on last week, last time I was here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I looked at the, the, uh, the uh, flowers on, on the table, and, and the, what we have is something that I didn't put in the picture. So there's, uh, there's a cup to catch the water if it, 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 when you water the uh, flowers, and there's a sort of a dish that's uh, in back right here. Goes around like that. And uh, let's give a, another little marking on the inside edge like that. There's a cup there, and uh, there's uh, some uh, cards. So the cards are standing up on end here which didn't, they, they didn't show up before because, and I couldn't do much about it as far as outlining. Then there's a little, uh, a little box of uh, uh, some chocolates. I'm just gonna outline it, re redefine it a little bit more here as a shape, and then maybe give the, uh, some of these uh, little wrapped chocolates uh, a little bit of uh, outline here. In the, in the box, something like that. So things kind of perk up a little bit. Then over here, I'm just gonna make some more markings of, of uh, the cards standing up on edge. Usually this is what we do. We, uh, a lot of times we have birthdays, we get cards, we put them up around the table. And usually, from some, some of my children, uh, uh, all of my children, uh, uh, they they send a, a, a bouquet over to to mother, so, and for myself of course. This 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 one's for our our anniversary. This vase of flowers. Okay, something like that. See, you just kind of outline it a bit, and then some of the flowers uh, themselves. What I usually do is just put some darker, kind of a little bit of shading. Uh, uh, usually underneath there, just to define some of the, the flower shapes a little bit more. So another little flower back here, maybe give that a little bit of an outline. And um, I'm using kind of a larger type marker, but um, just gives this a little bit of a darker shade up in there. Now you have to be careful when you do this too. You can kind of overdo it a lot of times. Now I don't know if some of these leaves need a little bit of outlining. I'll just do a little bit there, a little bit in here, and uh, I can go to uh, like a, a smaller marker and just kind of give it the finishing touches. I I use these uh, um, markers here. I don't know if that's dark enough. Just give it a little bit of a little bit of a contour in there, just to perk it up. This has been sort of my style lately. I I sometimes do everything with the marker first, and then fill it in like you would a coloring book. Now, for a while, the coloring books were becoming popular. Uh, I, they've slowed down a little bit. It's like a, a novelty fad, you know, that people have. But uh, uh, I, I have a few friends that uh, have been using the coloring books, and they really do a nice job with it. 
it's it's uh, another exercise, uh, you know, fine motor skills and so forth, filling in all the colors. And I think it's good because you get used to uh, color distribution uh, with the coloring books. They used to have uh, some of these things you could follow the numbers, you know. They have uh, the num paint number one, you fill in the area that's got the numbers on, on it, uh, number one, number two, number three, whatever. And they still have those books also. I'll just show a little bit more detail here, not much. Candy has some little uh, uh, sort of a wrapper, you know, foil type of wrapper. And uh, just a few little markings here and there. I don't know if that perks it up a little bit more, but it uh, gives you an idea. Uh, I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on this. Uh, probably just a few more little marks on the flowers. Just a little bit. Oh, just to per perk it up a little bit more. And, uh, but a lot of times that's what you have to do uh, uh, when you look at it the next day. The next morning you know exactly what shade the colors have blended into or faded into, um, whatnot. So I probably could work on that a little bit more, spend a lot more time on it. But I'm just gonna put it back up here on the easel like that and that's from last week that's from last week okay now we'll start off with a, a clean piece of paper I use uh, that uh, Waterford Saunders paper it's, uh, it's become very popular and you know it's funny how it works I probably mentioned it last time or other times um, if something gets becomes popular, it gets the word gets back to the people, the salespeople, and they'll order more paper of that particular brand. But also, they push up the price a little bit more. And paper has gone up quite a bit, anyways. Lately, uh, everything's gone up. <laughs> paper, paint brushes, you name it. But uh, the paper is the thing that you uh, consume a little bit of. So now. I'm going to do something a little bit looser. It's going to be some fish, you know, kind of floating around in a little aquarium uh, uh, dish or bowl or whatever, and, uh, um, and and try to keep it loose. Now, I, I usually start off with a pencil. You can erase that. I have an eraser hiding in here somewhere. There you go. Keep that handy. I, and I've got all these little pieces of plastic that I use pushing the paint around, create a little extra t texture, so whatnot. So anyway, I'll um, keep the eraser handy. Now, what I usually do, um, I I'm going to just do some fish. And I'm starting off, the body shape can be like an oval, almost like an M&M &M little pill or, or little capsule shape. So I'm going to make it darker uh, than normal. So that will, hopefully this will show up on on the camera. And one fish here, another one going this way. Uh, something else coming into the picture over here. Now I've got three of something. Uh, three. Uh, I need a number. Okay, something maybe coming down out of here. Four. Um, let's say five. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now. Um, what I do is uh, it started off with like an oval, and then I add a triangle on there. Uh, maybe I could show you how that works. Just a little triangle on the, on the back end for the uh, tail. Let's put one over here, something over here. Now I'm going to go over this with, uh, with my marker, so it's going to show up more. Something like that, something coming into the picture. Um, let's see, okay. Let's have this one coming up this way. I'll change the direction here a little bit. Okay, something like that. All right, now, I'm, I'm just gonna go over this with a marker, okay? So, um, 
just following the contour. Now this is going to show up quite a bit, quite a bit. There we go. There's a little indenture for the mouth. And then down here, then you get your, your fins, come back up into here. You do add a little extra drawing. Okay, here's the mouth. Let's go to the back of the fish, a little curve there. Come out to the little X on the tail here. Got another fin going that way. See how we can make those fish show up? Okay. Tail. Fin, fin, back. Okay. Another one going this way. This one I'm going to bend a little bit, have it twist out, maybe make the tail fin a little bit larger than my pencil. A little bit over here, another fin going that way. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that one in a minute. Well, let's finish it off a little bit over there. A um, little bit over here, tail fin. Now what you don't want to do sometimes is have something going out of the painting. Uh, you can get away with something coming in, moving around here. Um, you can have sort of a rhythmic pattern. You can start with like uh, an S shape and then locate the fish moving around that. The lettuce C, you know, just a little curvature and do something with that. Okay, there you go. Now the eye, I'm just gonna put a little dot in here. You might see the fin, eye in there, the fin, eye, okay. All right, eye, eye, fin, fin, okay. That's about it there. Now, what we're gonna have, they're in the bowl, so you're going to see some sort of seaweed coming up, you know, something in the bowl. It can be in back of, or it can be in front of something. Okay, you're going to see some of that in the water. Have that floating around. Okay, some of these could be plants, you know, put some little leaves on it, whatever's down there. And uh, so anyways, they're water bound in here. So. What you want to do is create a little bit of movement. Now, I think I have an uneven number. Yes, I do, five, a five. One, two, three, and then you got two here. Um, you got an uneven number of fish. Um, you can manipulate the shapes, uh, spend a lot more time with the, the drawing, you know, uh, when you do this. You know, something, you know, whatever you want to add to it. Sometimes in, if it's in a fish bowl or whatever, you might have like little things that you can insert, little stones or a little bridge or a little castle or whatever you might put in the fish, fish bowl. Uh, so anyways, that's about it. Now, I spend a minimal, um, and I, said it, I say this all the time, I spend a minimal amount of time as far as the drawing goes. I may spend a little bit of extra time sometimes uh, with the composition where, where I'm going to have things set up for the most part. But anyways, um, what I'm doing here is just kind of, you know, kind of putting things together, an uneven number, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven little things floating around plants underwater. But, uh, so I tend to do that. And I tend not to uh, have things going out of the picture, but having things kind of more or less coming into the picture. You see, you've got only this uh, couple here going that way, almost forms a triangle. And you got uh, a triangle in there, a triangle in here. So that, that's not a bad arrangement uh, as far as that goes. But I always, I'm always thinking of like the movement, you know, uh, whatever it is, if it's a flower arrangement, uh, it's always thinking of the uh, placement uh, of the, uh, the objects, okay? Now, um, as far as uh, uh, doing this painting part, uh, what I do is just wet the paper, and uh, uh, of course I can wet 
everywhere today. It's supposed to be underwater anyway, so <laughs> so it's, everything's wet, right? You wet the whole paper. And you use permanent ink pens, these uh, Sharpie pens. You, you can other, use other brands. But if you're going to combine uh, markers uh, with uh, watercolor, make sure it's permanent ink so it doesn't uh, uh, obviously uh, blur. That's the word for blurring. Okay, That's, here we go. You don't want a, too much of a blur. So I just wet the paper down. Now sometimes I put a false border around. I'm not doing that today. I'm, go, I'm just going, covering the whole piece of paper. But you can put a mat, a mat around all of this later on for the finishing touches. I could still create sort of a false background, leave, leave some of that white out there, you know, just have it go off the edge in places. Okay, I guess I got it distributed pretty well. Now if I got too many, if I, got, if I have a puddle there, I have to be careful, and so I take a piece of towel where I don't want it to be too wet yet. I just blot that area. Now what you can do, if you uh, sketch with a pencil, I just use a regular pencil, 2B or whatever, and uh, if you uh, have some pencil marks that you want to erase, you can erase them before you put any water on the paper, or you can wait and, and do the whole painting, and then you can erase, uh, if, if the watercolor is dry, the paint is dry, you can erase the pencil right through the watercolor um, uh, that, that you've used. Okay, now, um, let's see what we have here. Okay, now, let's uh, figure out of course, it's usually in a uh, fish bowl. It's usually uh, clear water. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the, the, the blue. Use, I'm using the uh, thalo blue, which is sort of like a cerulean blue. And we're just going to wet the, around the fish a little bit. Don't have to be too fussy with it. You just want to get some color in there. If you want to wiggle the, the brush around a little bit, um, you can. You can make it a little bit darker too. Something like that. Just get some background in there. This is the fun part. This is the easy part. I always tell people don't spend an awful lot of time with a fussy with the clouds and so So but just, just put them in and uh, probably make, try to make them look like an interesting shape, you know. Uh, but here, of course, you're dealing with the water, so it's just a matter of going with the flow, I guess. Okay. I haven't done too many fish paintings. Usually I work from uh, some of the uh, magazines and natural nature, animal uh, bugs and fish and so forth, magazine pictures. Here we go. Just a wash of a color, uh, a light. Now, if you want to put a pinch of, uh, you, I've got Rossiana here, I could just put a pinch of that into the blue I've been using, it's just a little pinch. And uh, if you want to show a little bit of coloring in the water, because salt water has that sort of a greenish color to it, you can dash a little bit of that in there. Mix it in with your blue. Put a little bit more blue back into that Rossiana. Okay, see what that looks like. Okay, a little bit darker. Okay. A lot of people like to 
do scuba diving and stuff like that. And when you're in a, a, a tropical area, you know, around some of the islands, the water is nice and clear, pretty much. It's almost like uh, fresh water. The, uh, the water up around our area, I guess because of so many boats or wh whatever it is, um, it usually has uh, a little bit more of a um, discoloration, if you will. There you go. Yeah, that works. Mix a little dash of that yellow. Kind of push a little bit more over in this area. Yeah, a little bit back in here. Okay, That's the background. All right. Now, um, if I get a little bit of color on the body of the fish, I don't think it's going to hurt too much. But I'm just going to pat it so that will help some of that paint to dry faster. But I don't mind a light shade of something on the fish itself. Just pat that a little bit. Now you could you could do different things uh, with uh, the water. You could take a brush. This starts to set up, and sometimes I just take brush, uh, just some clear water, and you could just take some uh, brush and just spatter, and create some little texture, like water spe specks here. And it will show up more, it's showing up a little bit in there, but you can tap your brush around and create some more bubbles or texture that way. All right. Um, I may, may use some of my Q-tips today too for some of the speckly markings on the fish. You can have the, some of the fish look like, look like they're tattoos. Now, a color that probably shows up pretty good is uh, if you take a little bit of red, we'll put a little bit of red in here, a little bit of yellow, stir it around, you can make an orange color. Now, you can uh, do whatever you want. You can fill the fish in with a solid color. I'm going to use my, uh, or you can. Uh, do some speckling here. You can put some spots in there. Use a, using the Q-tip. Whatever, whatever you want to use. Uh, these could be sort of like goldfish, I guess. There's another name for goldfish. I can't think of it right now. But they grow to be pretty good size. Goldfish. So you get kind of speckle around in there. I don't know if you want to do the markings on everything. You can change the color a little bit more. Do a little, few, few little specks with a Q-tip. Okay, you can take a regular brush too, and uh, you can push some of that color. If you want to uh, make the color a little um, more of a solid texture, you can just take the brush and pull some of that color around. Okay, you know, pull, pull it around, spread it around, combination of both speckling and whatnot. Some of the fins can be a little bit more transparent. Should make them show up a little bit more. This one here, back here. Now you can be as decorative as you want with the fish. Um,
need a little bit of that in there. Some of these back here, you're not going to notice as much uh, texture. So some of those could appear to be a little bit more of a solid color. Sometimes the fins are a little bit more transparent. Kind of pull those out. Something like that. Um, now, what I did today, uh, I kind of outlined um, everything uh, first. So you're almost uh, working like you would, uh, like a coloring, you're coloring a book, you know, just filling in the, the area. But you can, you can paint, you can paint in the body and then save the uh, outlining using a permanent marker later on. You can't use the marker while the uh, paper's still wet, but uh, wait a little bit and you can uh, let it dry and then come back. Let's change this a little darker color. Yes, for variety. But if I do it there, I can do it somewhere else. Just repeat that color somewhere else. Now, if you go a little bit outside the line, that's okay. Not the end of the world so if you happen to do that. Let me just go out here a little bit. There you go. You do a little bit of uh, brushwork, you know. With the, Wiggle the brush around a little bit. If you want to make the fins and the tail go out a little sharper, you just kind of go out and just lift up with the brush. And you can add whatever you want to. You want to add a, another fin or two here and there. Do that. Do around the, the mouse here. Kind of fill that in. That's kind of a solid color. Um, you may not want it that dark, or you want to lighten it up a bit. What I do is just put some water on the brush, and uh, take a paper towel that's clean. You just blot it here and there. See how you can lighten up that shade? Lighten that up quite a bit. Do around the mouth here. And you slipped up as you go out on the tail fins here. Yeah, you do all sorts of markings. Now this one here, can be a little bit uh, darker, similar to that. So let's go back in here, pick up some of that raw sienna. And you can do some markings in here. Something like that. Now if that shows up uh, a little bit too strong sometimes, you can quiet it down. Let's finish this one off in here. I got to add a fin there. Let's put <laughs> something else in there. We can draw the fin back in there before I forget to do that. Yeah, something like that on that side. This could have something else going over here too. Whatever. Now this has got the fin in there. I don't know if it's you can see the fin on both sides. Sometimes you know, can't do too much with it. It's still wet, but uh, you you can work around that a little bit. Now um, let me take a 
pat this a little bit on, dry that up a bit in there, do a little bit more on the tail, make it lighter. Um, so there's all sorts of things you can do. Now you can take a small brush and uh, you can put some little markings, uh, uh, little stripes on the uh, fish. I'm kind of holding back a little bit on that because I want the that to dry before I start doing any uh, tattooing, if you will. Okay. Put the markings over here. Finish off the tail here. Get some color into that. Now, the beauty of watercolor, if an area dries, all you have to do is hit, hit it with a wet brush and you reactivate the color. You want to pull the color around a little bit, you can. And it can be dry for two weeks or more. And if you come back and wet it with water, it reactivates the color. Same way uh, on your palette. Uh, the paint does dry a little bit, it films over and whatnot, but just add some water to it, reactivate it. Do a little bit on the tail here. Fin goes out here somewhere. We got everybody covered a little bit on this one. Oops, need a little bit more water. Okay, you can see how this works. Now you can get as fancy if you want with the, uh, as far as painting, uh, <clears throat> the markings on the fish, tropical fish especially, my gosh. They, Comes in all various colors. I've been on um, some of these boats that have a glass bottom and you can kind of see around. And sometimes they'll go over where there's a sort of a, a, a boat wreck or shipwreck or something and you can kind of expose that a little bit because of the glass bottom of the boat. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of letting this set up a little bit. Um, Get it around here a little bit more. Sometimes even they have uh, on the scales of the fish, there's a lot of a lighter color, sort of on the belly part, you know, underneath here. All right. Let this dry a little bit. The markings get a little bit too busy, like if you don't want too much uh, texturing. Uh, you can always reactivate that and just blend it in. Yeah, a little bit more on this one. Yeah, you can kind of blend that in. Now, as far as the plants go, um, underwater. Uh, you can make them probably different colors if you want. Um, primarily, I would say probably what I do is a little bit of green. Mix that with your uh, blue. And if it's dry enough, let's make sure I got a clean spot on this paper towel here. Okay, you could do a little bit of uh, 
some of the uh, plants on the water. You can start a bear down a little bit heavier, and as you go up, keep lifting the brush up so you can bring that more to a point. Okay, we'll do another one over here. And keep lifting the brush up. Whoops. Keep lifting it up and then go out. We could put some little leaves on this plant here and add a little bit of texture to it. Okay, and do another one. Now they can be a little darker shade, so just take a pinch more blue and a little bit more yellow. And you can make some of these other uh, plants a little bit darker. Put something like that in the background. Now, sometimes the brush might be a little bit too large, so you can go back and uh, do some of this. Let's bring that out more to a point like that. And you can go over some of these plants a little bit with a marker, um, a smaller marker or pen or brush, whatever you want to use. Okay, let's connect that out there. So you get all these plants you can do. Now there might be some plants that, that might have a, a little bit of color to them. There might be some red things out there or whatever uh, that you might add. But whatever you do, uh, you have to kind of, well, you don't have to, but it's, it's nice if you could repeat that color somewhere else. Um, okay. Now, these things look like they're floating. So let's, let's bring this one right down to the edge of your paper. This one could pull, pull this down into there. And uh, when you put a mat on it, it kind of locks it in a little bit more. Um, there might be some other th things that are happening out there. You know, you can have some other things floating around. Going back here, come out here. Okay, you know, you could, you could put as much in there if you want, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, sometimes I add a little bit of sand, take some of that raw sienna, put it across the bottom. You make it look like it has a sandy bottom down in through here. Wiggle that around. Okay. Have some sand in there. The sand can be relatively kind of a smoother edge to it. Put, put a little bit of texture down there. right to the edge. Okay, you can pull some of the paint out of that if you don't want it too dark. Put a little sand in there across the bottom, something like that. Um, now, I'm kind of letting a little bit of this dry. Uh, so that uh, when I come back, you can put some more markings on the fish. Um, you could put some little stripes in there, whatever you want to do. Um, because right now, everything looks too much the same. Um, but you, you, if you don't want some of the straggling, you can kind of just pull some of that and kind of connect it down into here so I have it go off in the background. Get a little bit of this over here, kind of bring that down in there. Okay. 
Now this is supposed to be under water so you can have some of this uh, kind of blurry in there. Okay, something like that. Um, now let's see if it's dry enough here. Okay. Looks like it's okay. Now what we can do here is take like a, uh, a very thin brush. Wait a minute, that's not the one. Do I have a real thin one? Somewhere here hiding. Yeah, there you go. Now you can put some markings. You put some markings on the fish. Let's do this one. You can have some, oops, get a little bit more color. If it's dry enough, you can put some markings on the fish. Pick up that little speck there. Okay. See how that works? Little markings. This one looks kind of plain, so we can give him or her <laughs> some, some little paint on the body. Something like that. Now, I'm kind of going a little bit on the cautious side here, so I'm not putting the color in too heavy yet. Just add some color. And what I usually do is go over this. If it doesn't, if it's not showing up enough, I just give it a little bit more color. You see how that works? Just put a little bit more color in there. Yeah. It's a little bit too much on there, but maybe it could be a little bit too much. I'll just soften that out a little bit more. Yeah, that will dry a little bit softer. Now, did we leave anybody out? Probably. How about some markings up in the air? Okay, a little bit over here. Oh, uh, I don't want to get that too busy. I don't want to get that too busy there. Let's see, this one shows up quite a bit, doesn't it? Now, you could either make this a little lighter or you can make some of the other fish a little bit darker. You put this one in a little darker, just to complement that one. This one really shows up. And soften that out. Pull that around in there more. Okay. Now, um, the only other thing uh, you could add, you could add some other little things floating around there, little bugs or whatever might be in the water. And uh, uh, sometimes what I do is add some bubbles. So, you know, coming up, put some bubbles in there. I don't know if I, they'll show up because of the, uh, the, the, uh, Paper might be still a little bit wet. You have some bubbles coming up here and there. And uh, you could probably uh, do some uh, more uh, drawing across the bottom. Uh, sometimes I just take the brush and uh, speckle it, make it look like sand. I mean, uh, little pebbles, rather. And, uh, or you could take, uh, like I did earlier, you could take uh, some water and just drop some water in there and make it look like little water stains on the sand or whatever. Now this is, looks a little bit too light over here, so let's add a little bit more 
color into that. So it shows up in the, right around to here. Yeah. Okay. So that's a little bit, it's kind of the eye goes to that spot. So I know it, it probably would be lighter tomorrow after the paint dries, but if you want to be on the safe side, they just take a little bit of that out. Just pull some of that out. Let's take a little dry piece of towel. You know, blot this down a bit. Some of the marking. Now you can add some another little ring. You can put another ring around that eye if it's dry enough. Oh, that's not showing up too well. So, but whatever whatever you want to uh, do to it, um, like uh, you could take. Let's take another. Q-tip here. That, oh, I, I used that one. Let's take a clean one. And you can add some other little color to uh, some of the fish. Now, if you, if you do it with one or two, you have to do it, give everybody, you know, a little bit of coloring. A little few taps here and there. Okay. So whatever you want to uh, work on, you can uh, add a little bit here or there. <clears throat> now, um, I'm just trying to think of something else that you could probably put in the water. It, it can always be other fish too, or a little baby fish. You can always, uh, you know, take your pencil and you can add little particles of different things coming into your painting if you want. Bugs or whatever might be in the water. Um, so, and, uh, oh, down in here, sometimes what I do is, uh, uh, take a, you could use a brush, I guess. Just put some little specks in the sand. Just darken some of this down. In, in, just little specks. Just add some texture there. You can do that. Just a little bit, you know, just uh, add some texture. Sometimes if, you, if it's still wet, some of these things will sort of fade in and uh, not show up as much. A little bit of texture down there. Uh, you can make the bubble show up a little bit more. The only trouble is I tried to use the marker. The paper's still a little bit wet, so... Uh, Here you go. We we'll have a little bit more color on that one up there. Take a little pinch of some of that pink or blue or red, whatever. A little bit of everything here. Just a little bit of coloring up in here. That's a little bit on the heavy side. You'll pull it out. Whoops. Get too much. Quiet that down a bit, huh? Yes, yeah, that shows up too much. I just hit it a little bit. Take some of the color out of here. Put it on this one. A little bit more over here. I 
just lift some of that out of there. We'll block that. Yeah. I think it will look all right in the morning. We, everything's got to look a little bit lighter. But uh, if it does, you can just uh, add a little bit more color to it. Make them a little bit more texture down here. Now usually there's a lot of other little things on the bottom of the, the dish sometimes. There's a little pebbles, larger, larger shapes and things, and of little stones and all that. So you get the idea of how that works. Um, so if you see anything that might be a needs a little touch up, you can go over it. That's what I like about watercolor because you can go over all this a little bit more. And uh, but if you try to use a marker while it's still wet, it doesn't work as well. Doesn't work at all sometimes. Add a little bit more texture in there, and like I said, if you if you wanted to put, you could put as much seaweed or things floating around down there as you want. But if if it's still wet, the markers don't work. You can have some of this going on into the uh, background. A little bit more texture in there. Okay, well this gives you an idea how you do an underwater picture. Some people work a lot of glaze in there too. They they kind of build up a, a lot of the texture. And uh, let's see, this one could use a little larger eye in there. So that, that's about it, folks, for today. Um, I do a lot of things relative to uh, nature. Uh, sometimes I do um, like uh, lions and tigers, but I just do usually uh, like the portrait, you know, of the head. And uh, th those things uh, uh, take a little bit more uh, drawing time and, and you have to be fussy about painting, you know, the fur texture and all that. So you have to w work a lot of that in. But this, this will give you an idea what it looks like. And you can uh, put a, a border or, or uh, like a, a mat around it and frame it. And it looks a lot better. Sign it, of course, somewhere. And uh, that's about it. So until next time, I guess we, we'll have to say... Uh, Here's a big side, good side brush. Brushes up. Thanks for being with us. And uh, anytime you want to uh, send a note in, something that you're interested in, uh, just let us know. Just, you know, send a note to the studio in care of Ben. And uh, I'd like to hear from you. I know one lady uh, came up to me the other day and said, hey, I watched your show. I said, hey, I'm glad to hear it. I know there's quite a few other folks that catch us. We're on about a few times during the week and uh, different times. They usually put the schedule in Friday nights in the Sun Chronicle. That's when they, uh, they list the, you know, the programming for the week. And so uh, catch up with us Channel 15, okay? So thanks a lot again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.